Good afternoon and namaskar everyone. This is Aparna Mishra, founder of Women Shine. Welcomes you all to the same Facebook Live. As we celebrate Republic Day, it is imperative we remember the women who have shown extraordinary courage during freedom struggle. Today we will be looking at some women freedom fighters in the freedom struggle who proved that no obstacle was large that could stop them from expressing their love for the country and fighting in whichever way possible so that they can make the country free from the shackles of foreign rule. We all remember a famous personality of modern Hindi literature, Jai Shankar Prasad Ji. He has written so many poems on patriotism. The famous one is Himadri Tunga Shung Se Prabuddha Shuddha Bharati Swayam Prabha Samajjula Swatantrita Pukarati Amarthi Veer Putra Ho Dhrup Pratik Ye Soch Lo Prashast Purne Panthe Hai Vadhe Chalo Vadhe Chalo so we have today two wonderful guests over here who will talk about women warriors in freedom struggle. We have our beautiful moderator, Rini Maheshwari with us. So over to you, Rini. Okay. So hello, everyone. Firstly, a very happy Republic Day. I would like to welcome both of you. And I think it's going to be great listening to such amazing women who have written very amazing books about, uh, about Indian history and especially focusing about women participation. I would like to begin by uh, by talking to Ms. Arjuna Garodia Gupta, ma'am. So my first question would be to you. When we talk about freedom fighter, we as general will recall the male freedom fighters. Women were always a part of it. And we know a few names like Rani Lakshmi Bai, Bikaji Kama. So why are these names forgotten? Why are they not given the due credit? Well, if you look at our history in India, um, Women, of course, we have to realize and we have to accept that they were taking the back seat and they were not that, you know, they were not that prominent in the public field, right? If you had women rulers, but uh, of course, you had very many more men rulers or even in any public field in administration in education and so many fields, uh, men were taking the free women were at home and they were uh, looking after children and that was the normal uh, that was a normal situation and it is so still today in so many countries including ours but uh, in india we always had women, some women who fought their way to the forefront or who were so convinced about their whatever uh, they were very convinced about whatever commitments they had so for that they fought their way uh, to the forefront and um, even in the field of fighting against the British, we have had many, many, many women who, who were rulers, who uh, did not accept uh, the treaty terms or did not accept being dispossessed and fought. So we see as soon as the Europeans started coming to India and they started... Uh, uh, so the first people to come were the Portuguese, right? And they were basically attacking the kingdoms on the coast, on the western coast of India. And we see many, uh, that part had many women rulers because in the south, especially in Kerala, you have a system where the inheritance is through the women. You have matrilineal so society, mm -hmm. especially in Kerala. So because of that, you had more women in power in that part of the world. And you find a lot of them fought against the Portuguese and against the British. Uh, we have the very famous story of Rani Abaka. I think this was a story which many people didn't know about, but it is now coming to the forefront, where uh, she was the ruler of a small kingdom of Ulal. And uh, she fought against the Portuguese. And actually, in um, 1618, she burnt the Portuguese fleet, which is something like, you know, Queen Elizabeth's burning of the Armada. At that time, the Portuguese, uh, Portugal was owned by Spain. And it's, uh, but we don't know about it. Uh, very few people know that she did something so brave and she did it. She got together fishermen and they went in their boats with Agniwan and coconut mashals and they sneaked in amongst the Portuguese fleet fleet and they burnt it. Uh, you have uh, the Attingal Ranis who were rulers of an independent kingdom in Kerala and 
it was their sons who would then become the rulers of Travancore. So generation after generation, their son would become the ruler of Travancore. But there is a very unknown story about a British, uh, the Attingal Rani had granted a fort to the British uh, for trading. And this is in the early 1700s. And the British were misbehaving with the locals and they were uh, fighting with the, uh, you know, oppressing the locals. And you have that these British, uh, these British were invited and actually uh, to the king uh, capital and they were actually massacred, all of the British. Now, this is, but in spite of that, the British just went back and they asked for her, the queen's forgiveness instead of attacking it. At that time, the strength of the queen was so much more than of the British that they, you know, accepted it and they asked for their fort back again to continue trading. Um, I think what happens with Indian history is that typically because India is so vast and there are so many stories, people yes. pick and choose and some of them become known and some of them get lost. So I think our job as historians is also to bring forth these stories which are there. They are available but not as well known uh, mm. to research them and bring forth a correct version of these can stories you, and to share it with people. So, so can um, you name like a few others who are less known but have done like really brilliant work in this freedom struggle in the southern part? Can you name a few like female freedom fighters who have done great work but are still unknown to the general people? So. Um, one example I'd like to bring forth, and this is an interesting story because this is a freedom fighter who actually won. You see, most of the stories which we have are of queens who fight the British and lose bravely or die at the end. But this is the story of a lady called Velu Nachiar, who was there in the late 1700s in Tamil Nadu. Uh, she was the wife of the ruler of Shiv Ganga. And her, the British took over her kingdom, killed her husband. She managed to escape with her daughter. And she escaped to the neighboring kingdom of Mysore and took refuge with Hyder Ali. Okay. Uh, she built up, Hyder Ali said he would help her attack and get back her kingdom. But he said that he just signed a treaty with the British, so she would have to wait a bit until, you know, they were at war again. And she used that time to create an army of women. So one thing to remember is that it's not only the ruler who we talk about who gets all the press, but uh, also very often they used to have women warriors who we know the names of some of them, but we don't know the names of the others who yeah. also fought. And I'd like to say one thing here. You see, when you have people like Rani Lakshmi Bai or Begum Hazrat Mehel or uh, even Bejo mm -hmm. Nachiar or Kitur Chinnama, they the British were taking away the kingdom of their child. Yes. And to prevent that being taken away, the queens fought. So they had a very personal reason to yes. fight the uh, British. But if you look at their soldiers, the women who fought with them, you have people like Chalkari Bai who fought with uh, Rani Lakshmi Bai or Uda Devi who fought with Begum Hazrat Mehen. These women did not have personal reasons. Yes. They were fighting because of the principle of the thing, which hmm. in some ways I think is a, even a greater reason to fight. You know, If you see the freedom fighters who fought in the 20th century, non-violence or people who were part of the independence struggle. Most of them became part of the freedom struggle as a matter of principle. It was not some personal fight which they were fighting. They were not defending their territory or something, which is, I think, in a way, an even greater commitment. And even without a personal stake, they were going and fighting for the sake of the nation. Anyway, let me get back to Velu Nachyar. Um, so she actually got together a group of 
women warriors, which is rare uh, yes. from all communities. And then when uh, Hyder Ali went into the second Anglo-Mysore war, they went along with him, but they went to Shivganga to try and fight the British there. Uh, they sneaked in to in disguise. There was a Dashera festival. So they sneaked in like villagers and they reached the where the main soldiers were and threw off their disguise and started fighting. And then one of them, the leader of the troop called Kuili, uh, she actually drenched herself in oil and put herself on fire and ran into the ammunition dump and blew up the British ammunition stores. And that's how they won. So then she, be Velu Nachiar became the ruler of uh, uh, Shilkam. And she, she crowned her daughter. And then, you know, she took a back seat. So this is a story of somebody who actually defeated the British. Now, of course, in Tamil Nadu, they issued a stamp and she's slowly becoming better known. Kuili, who was a Dalit, is becoming a Dalit hero in Tamil Nadu. So I'm saying in every area, in every state, you will find women who fought. You will find foot soldiers. You will find rulers. You will find women who fought in the independence struggle. You will find revolutionaries. Durga Devi was a comrade of Bhagat Singh. You will find women who fought for the rights of women. So not yeah. just against foreigner but also for the rights of women like uh, uh, you know Begum Rukaya Sakhavat Hussain in uh, Bengal for education or Savitri Bai Phule. Mm -hmm. So there are stories they are not just a few stories nationally there will be yeah. a story in your town yeah. there will be a story in your state even in every village our independent struggle was won by the participation of the masses. So in every village, there will be women who fought for independence. Okay. Achha, as uh, you just mentioned about Savitri Bai Phule, so she was helped immensely by her husband, Jyotiba Phule. So is there, uh, what do you think is the male participation or the male help that these female, uh, female warriors got from their counterparts so that like they got this courage to fight. And is there any reference about this in your book? Oh, um, I will certainly one of the things I've noticed, if you see all the women, even women warriors or women who became rulers or women who got into any kind of position. See, the way is very tough. So the people who get help, society is was totally against women coming forward and taking charge or getting into any position of power. So all the help that anyone can get helps, you know, it allows the person to come forward. If you see the stories, most of the women had champions. The champion was, could have been their husband, it could have been their father. And if you say, go back... Razia Sultan, her father encouraged her. If you see uh, uh, Kittur of Chinnama, it was her husband who let her rule or get in, you know, get into that position. Uh, Velu Nachiar was given a boy's education by her parents. Yeah. So you do need that help. There are the many few people, yes. I'm not saying it's not possible without the help of your family, husbands, or other family people. But if you get the help, it becomes that much easier. And if you actually see the stories of the women, many of the women, they have been helped by the men in their family. That is a very big role, especially yes. at the time of education. Yes, actually, it begins right in the childhood. So they are like fed like that. So they are treated like that. And then only in the near future, they can become re real warriors. Right. You have exceptions where people did not have those opportunities and still managed, but those are fewer. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Archana, ma'am. Now, uh, moving to Rahim Unisa, ma'am. So, uh, congratulations for your book. I think it hasn't been released yet, but we are waiting for it. 
so your ba- your book is basically dedicated to sarojini naidu so my first question would be when we talk about sarojini naidu we recall her as leader who emerged and ignited the fire of patriotism so what qualities do you think a woman should develop to be an passionate leader like her yes uh, miss maheshwari uh, as you said the book has uh, been released by the andhra university vice chancellor but not at reached sarojini naidu's abode due to covid 19 reasons we are still on the street uh, mm-hmm. as uh, mentioned by archana didi i strongly acknowledge mm-hmm. that very few women have the courage or the quality or the traits inbuilt traits to come out and you know fight Uh, both at the personal front professional front as well as national front such is a uh, uh, domination quality of uh, sarojini naidu garu uh, why i said this because she is not from north or east or west she is from south a person uh, from south uh, maybe hailing from telangana this side andhra that time you know we were combined uh, states so a person from uh, andra has all that uh, vigor courage and uh, literally she was uh, admired by uh, her male counterparts uh, she has the daring and dashing attitude highly qualified lady and also she know how to you know bring out reforms not just by raising voice by fight but also through literary those days uh, i think education well was not as, as it was today uh, literature was a perfect tool to teach to the masses one way so i think that has caught her attention and she has that literary skills through which i think we all admire and uh, a second important area where we admire sarojini naidu garu is uh, she has been risen to the position of being uh, you know a governor so that was also a very good uh, attribute political participation of sarojini naidu garu was uh, of immense impact uh, on the region. so that was uh, one area which i think women should uh, dream and women should uh, literally showcase their uh, quality of participation uh, not just you know dominating the show but then equal participation i think that is highly appreciated so yeah so sarojini naidu had a guru that is like gopal krishna gokhale who encouraged her to raise her voice so that the whole of india could hear her so i would like to know what does a uh, role a guru helps us like what is the role of a guru and women can women be a guru for herself oh yeah, why not <laughs> if you take guru the role of guru uh, we have one uh, sanskrit shloka called saying that guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwara guru sarshat para brahma tasmay sri guruve namaha guru is tridev guru is shivji guru is you know uh, sri vishnu and guru is brahma uh, when hinduism believe in trinity concept three days are the forefront lords right so they said the lord may not be at your shoulder at your head and at your brain and your heart and soul your teacher is your brahma your teacher can rewrite your destiny your teacher can mold it your teacher can create your you know persona as such so that is brahma and vishnu and maheshwara are known to be creators and destroyers so a guru has that kind of a qualities of being a lord of the lords where he or she can shape you uh, since we believed in male domination and you know emancipation maybe they said guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwara but we could say guru lakshmi guru saraswati and guru parvati as well because we believe in equality concept and if we worship goddesses goddess saraswati is known for her you know uh, i need not tell you what goddess saraswati the place she enjoys in our uh, mythology in our vedas even saraswati puja bhi isliye hum karte hain to guru i think lady lady is the first guru your mother is your first guru your teacher is the first guru i think when who else be the best teacher for you than a female counterpart to me i i understand female teachers are perfectly in, uh, act but the problem is nowadays gurus are commercial gurus so that is another edge which uh, i think should be ruled out from this liberalized privatized and globalized uh, you know economy now you don't find that kind of gurus which give you a solution to the problem they are rather these days you find gurus who are even molesting students and then you know uh, 
are doing some kind of nonsense maybe the criminal gurus also are also found here so that is the difference between the past and present yeah that's that's right actually so uh, so women empowerment has been a journey beat unfair practices adequate representation or academics etc there has been many then what is the reason they aren't reflecting enough in the era of politics means women empowerment has been going on since long and women have come out of their shells and are doing in great in many fields but not like not majorly in politics so what do you think is the reason and why are they being not coming up yet um yeah reasons if you look into past 7 75 years of glorified independence we are enjoying azadi ka amrit bharat mahotsav as such how many of us are literally really bothered about the nation about the rights about the women's rights about the society at large is a big question mark and as you rightly said maybe in those days we were fighting with a stranger with the outsider with the intruder nowadays the fight is among us the fight is definitely among uh, internal uh, you know sources so this is more dangerous it is like if you raise voice against your family against your district against your state against your nation against your own people it is not a, a freedom struggle it is something you are trying to establish a point that you are not supposed to be exploited uh, 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 this goes uh, this way like something if you are fighting with the british you are considered to be a hero a soldier a freedom fighter you are being a civil and a what you will be granted awards and honors but whereas if you raise voice against your own people usko bhagavat kehte hain right it is like something a very revolutionary reflectionary attitude of non gratitude which people coin you like that so this is one point where people doesn't want to raise their voice second important segment is last 75 years independence era has seen 20 to 30 years were just to build up the social uh, you know shattered society so many people just started thinking about their own families their livelihood their uh, you know development their personal goals wherein they were not literally bothered about institutional growth but now slowly i think that feel is coming up past two decades we have been instrumental in watching things about corporate social responsibility social transformation social leadership and then women are coming up in majority of the fields from you know gali to delhi and from uh, slums to uh, maybe space area the contribution of women is uh, really remarkable but then but then poverty illiteracy unemployment religious barriers are a greater extent contributing factors for this non participation of women in multiple sectors that's what i feel as a advocate and as a law teacher yeah, that's that's right like okay say, really, i would like to ask one question from ramina sir ramina sir like you had written this uh, book of uh, sarojini naidu right so what inspired you to write a book like a poem is i think it's a collection of poem right so what inspired you to write a book yes. on sarojini naidu are you a ardent follower of sarojini naidu or I what inspired exactly you did not uh... yes yes as i said uh, literature reaches to uh, lakhs of people crores of people okay one thing second thing is i am an ardent fan of mahatma gandhi ji the reason i am a lawyer second is durga bai deshmukh i do lot of social work and you know social service and i just want to uh, create some kind of institutional support for the destitute women third important uh, freedom fighter which i strongly admire uh, from the heart of my heart is sarojini naidu garu sarojini naidu garu uh, apart from though she is not an advocate uh, but then i admire her her political skills and her participation in education we have in state of telangana hyderabad her golden treasure her house has been converted into a golden treasure a university of hyderabad right so where uh, her poems especially bangle sellers a small poem when i was uh, studying degree or so i just fell in love with that poem bangle sellers little the theme is very small bangle is a very small item as far as the universal position is concerned but she took up and she wrote and there you see she reflects the entire history of a womanhood 
into the bangle the bangle culture wearing of the bangle not wearing of the bangle the colors of the bangle the voice of the bangle so on that's where i felt admired towards her writing style a very small piece of ornament uh, but that has uh, volumes to say from that time i was thinking i'll do something on this then covid 19 has come and covid 19 has given us unwarranted lockdown we were at home so not not knowing what to do in confusion and dilemma then i penned down 21 poems on covid and women's issues migrant issues how to fly where to fly where to go whether to take vaccine or not whether to be in lockdown or not if in lockdown what about economical position and online education right. offline education so much of confusion there i penned down 21 poems and i thought if it is something to law i have to give it to gandhi ji if it's something to do with institutional building i have to give it to durga bai ji so this is the only occasion where i can connect myself to sarojini naidu garu and i have approached that university authorities they said welcome rahim munisa you are all the more uh, you know fascinating personality for us but let us not take covid uh, into you know count let it be over and then we will invite you so that was the connect between me and sarojini naidu garu okay that's lovely lovely so is it uh, the book is available on amazon or like how you will be how you're doing marketing of this book i will, i will definitely bring it to amazon and dedicate this to sarojini naidu garu and as well i belong to all india women conference this is a 90 plus year ngo in india very popular and famous there again sarojini naidu garu was our past president even through am uh, wc also we are trying to make it a very huge success with the support of the Lovely. president and present secretary kulji kaur great so i think it was great interacting with you two amazing personalities arshna ma'am i i've always admired you you were there in my uh, women shag as well so really uh, I'm an ardent fan of yours, and of course, Zainul Sam. Uh, uh, many congratulations! All the best for your book. I hope your book is the best, is one of the best sellers. <laughs> so I think let's wind up and thank, thank you so you much. much. Have a great day, and thank you, Rini, for your moderation and support. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.